This year's NBA Finals have suddenly become great theater. Game five bringing us an epic duel. LeBron James sparkling play brought the Lakers to oh so close to a title. But Jimmy Butler's incredible performance has Miami alive and well. And good evening, everyone, with Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy, Mike Breen on hand, Rachel Nichols with us as well. The Miami Heat's magical run continues. They survive the Game 5 thriller, and here we are in Game 6. And Mark, Jimmy Butler did it again. He has had two spectacular performances where they think not only is there going to be a Game 7, they think they can win it all. He's been unbelievable. There's not much more that Jimmy Butler can do in this series for this Miami Heat team. Basically has done it all, putting them in position to fight against this favorite Los Angeles Lakers team, scoring mentality, turning the corner, being aggressive, continuing to keep his foot on the gas pedal, attacking the paint area, making plays against bigger, stronger guys. Does not matter. The ability down the stretch, they put the ball in his hands, attacks, doesn't score, but gets to the free throw line, sealing the victory. And then you need a stop, does exactly that. The biggest contribution to me that he's given this team is a belief, a belief that they can win it all. It may be delusional, but it puts them two wins away from doing that treat. And as good as he's been, they need timely help from the other players to get this job done. Duncan Robinson, seven threes in game five. In game six, they're going to need different players to step forward. You see Adebayo, Hero, and Crowder. None of them shot the ball particularly well in the last game. They're going to need to do that so they can have a more balanced attack. As for the Lakers, LeBron James was sensational once again, but in our Domino's pregame HQ, it's amazing how in the NBA, one play away from a title. Yeah, and this play has been much dissected, and there's no right or wrong answer. I think he made the right decision by passing, or he could have made the right decision by shooting. Here, he would have liked to have this shot been more pinpointed. It took Green out of his shooting rhythm, but still enough time and space for a great shooter like Green to make it. But what James did was he put on a phenomenal shooting show with all of this time and space. Six threes in the last ball game. When you guard LeBron James, you can't usually take away both the shot and the drive. Most games, if he makes threes like this, they're going to win. And you look at his efficiency in this finals, 58% from the floor when the game, game plan is directed at trying to limit your efficiency. Coming into the series, everybody said the Lakers had the two best players, even me, and we were right. That was coming into this series. During this series, the two best players clearly has been LeBron James and Jimmy Butler. Anthony Davis has got to find a way to be much more dominant against his smaller Heat team. The last three games, he's a minus two. Hobbled or not, he's got to be better, and the Lakers need him to be better, Mike. Well, Mark, he is playing with heel and ankle issues, but says no problem. He'll be ready to go. Meanwhile, as for the Heat, as you see Davis getting ready, they need another outstanding performance from Duncan Robinson moments ago. Spoke with Rachel Nichols. Thanks so much, Mike. Duncan, you have beaten these guys twice. What have you learned that you could then take it and beat them a third time? Uh, just that we're capable. You know, we've made adjustments uh, throughout the series, and we feel like we're getting better. So, obviously, we're excited for tonight. You did not have the best game, too. Jimmy Butler actually had you come to his hotel room for a few hours after the game, give you a little bit of confidence. He says you need to be shooting a lot for them to win tonight. What does that mean to you when your leader has that kind of faith in you? Uh, it means a lot. You know, this whole team, uh, coaching staff, teammates, they all instill confidence in me. So, I just try to go do my job, shoot it when I'm open, sometimes when I'm not. Excellent, Duncan. Thanks so much. Right. Good luck Thank tonight. You. Everyone else stick with us. We've got lineups and tip off right after this break. Living in the moment and not taking it for granted, knowing that the opponent, the man that's across from you, has that same feeling. James and Butler throwing haymakers at each other. Absolutely spectacular all night long. That's the beauty of the game, being able to compete at the highest level. But our confidence ain't going nowhere. It's going to stay high. I'm going to make sure that it stays high. Ain't nobody going home yet. We're still here. And this presentation of the NBA Finals will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The NBA Finals on ABC. We're all set to go. Game six upon us, and it's presented by YouTube TV. The Advent Health Arena. The Miami Heat and the LA Lakers. Of course, Jimmy Butler has been the story. He has played some all-time finals basketball through the first five games. 
Two triple doubles, one 40-point triple double, another 35-point triple double. And throughout the finals, he's kept his teammates involved. Ten or more assists in three of the five games. Hadn't done that in the first 70 playoff games of his career. And as the stakes grow higher, so do Butler's minutes, averaging six more per game in the finals than the first three rounds, including game five, where he only sat for 48 seconds. And now looking to go right back at it again here in game six. As we look at the starting lineups, delivered by Taco Bell and some interesting notes in terms of lineups for tonight. Look who's in the starting lineup. Alex Caruso, his first start of the playoffs. Dwight Howard will not start tonight. Caruso started a couple of games in the regular season, but first time in the postseason for Caruso. Meanwhile, for Miami, the same starting five, but Goran Dragic has been activated. So therefore, there's a chance that he will see some action tonight as we're set to go. Fascinating to see how both teams react after that thriller on Friday night. And the Caruso insertion into the starting lineup, a huge story. Guys, what do you think in terms of why Howard came out and why Caruso the one to be chosen to start? Well, I don't think, well, I know Dwight Howard didn't play well in the last ball game. Caruso's a gutsy call. If it was me, quite honestly, I wouldn't have made the change to Caruso. I would have stayed big and probably went with JaVale McGee. A welcome sight for the Lakers starting off with Anthony Davis knocking down a shot coach. And I think you're seeing Danny Green pick up full court. It's all about defense. They want their best perimeter defenders in the game to start the game out. Caruso is on Tyler Hero. Anthony Davis has played some of his best ball pass inside. Oh, gorgeous feed and out of bio with a difficult finish, but got it to go through. Davis has played some of his best ball than the Lakers had when he has played the center position as opposed to the power forward. Crowder's guarding him here. Anthony Davis steps back. That jumper won't go. Rebound goes to Robinson. I really expect Bam Adebayo to play much better. He's a guy that didn't point fingers, didn't make any excuses, embraced it, and quite emphatically said, I've got to be better. And the Lakers have to locate Duncan Robinson in transition. He was wide open. Robinson having the seven three-pointers in game five, 26 points. The undrafted second-year player. Hero pass inside. Thrown awry, and it's going to be Laker ball. The Lakers have not lost back to get back to back games all playoffs. They're 4-0 after a loss. But this is the first time in these playoffs with there's some real stress, some real pressure to win. Certainly it's not a closeout game, but it's pretty darn close. They do not want to have to play a game seven. Davis calling for the ball. Jimmy Butler's on him. Shot clock winding down. Davis leans in, shoots it over. Butler, an air ball, and a 24-second violation. And that's one of the things that works in the Heat's advantage, Coach. Russo's not a shooter. So the ability to double-team LeBron or Anthony Davis on their catches, living with, now he can make the shot, but defensively, I'm willing to live with him. And I think also, too, it's how much do we want to try to get Anthony Davis going versus get our best player involved in as many plays as possible, LeBron James. Good defense there from Davis. Forces the turnover, and James with the flush down the other end. And that was their greatest advantage in game five. They absolutely were devastating in transition, 25-4 to four versus the Heat. 25 fast break points the most they've had in the finals and Danny Green misses the three-pointer Of course Green was the big topic over the last couple of days had that open look at the end of game five that could have won the title for the Lakers Pass inside to out of not close picked up by James. We'll get back to that in a moment great hands by Caruso getting back into the pitch James barrels in and banks it home James guarding Jimmy Butler as the Lakers have an early four-point lead. Duncan Robinson, that quick release, and <laughs> knocks down the three. Davis and Caruso play catch. Caruso in the corner, Caldwell Pope, and he's fouled. Well, they're going dribble handoff. And Caldwell Pope shot the gap. Now, most times you would say 
you should chase over against Duncan Robinson, but he's right there. I actually think that's good defense. If he's going to make those shots, you just can't foul him. Duncan Robinson picking up his first personal, sending Caldwell Polk to the line. So I mentioned Danny Green. He addressed earlier about that situation that was so much talked about, and he answered it just like he approaches everything, like a, like a professional, like a man, and with a lot of grace. And the team has obviously been very vocal behind him, including Frank Vogel. He said, as a coach, I take that play every single time. He missed a shot. That happens yeah, in this league. The I, best has ever done it has missed shots in this league. That happened. Let's check in with Rachel. Yeah, Mike, Danny spoke to us this morning. He said, if I could have that play back again, I would give anything to get that shot back. Trust me. He said, looking at the film, and he looked at it a lot, guys. He said he had more time than he realized in the moment. He thinks he rushed it a little bit, shot a little bit off balance. But this is where him being a vet playing in his fourth NBA Finals is so important. He's had some great performances on this stage, and frankly, he's had some bad nights on this stage before that have been followed by great nights again. So he knows that that next good shot really is just around the corner, and that is the way he is approaching tonight. Thank you, Rachel. Offensive foul call down the other end. And this was the other night in the final seconds. James triple team and hit the front of the rim. You know, the thing I'll say is, yeah, he might have wanted to have that shot back. LeBron James would want to have that pass back, and Markeith Morris would want to have that pass back. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in a game, and I, I just, this idea that he needs to apologize or be talked to, I, he's I, a pro. i tell you what he don't need to do is watch more film of it. You missed a shot, that happens. And, and let me just address the elephant in the room. I'm embarrassed for the people that had the audacity to send death threats to him or his fiance. We're better than that as a people. It's just a game. I'm not sure we're better than that. Dan Davis drives, ball knocked away by Crowder. By the way, Davis picked up that last Laker foul. That's his first. Lakers by three. Tyler Hero, nice little fake. Duncan Robinson has some room again. That's two three pointers for Duncan Robinson already. And the Heat have tied it up. Robinson was just terrific in game five with the 26 points. Seven of 13 from downtown. Second time this playoff that he's had seven three-pointers. Did it against Indiana in the first round. Shot clock winding down. Danny Green's going to have to put it up. Just gets it off in time. Comes up short. Rebound right back to Green. Davis fakes the three. Back out to Green. Corner three-pointer. That's good. Danny Green, by the way, has been a winner throughout his career. Won a national championship at Carolina, won an NBA title with San Antonio, and of course, part of the Raptors championship team last year in Toronto. Bam out of bio, floats it up. That comes up short. They have missed some very makeable point blank shots as James continues to attack in transition. And over and over again, when they have numbers in transition, they convert. Coast to coast, LeBron James. James Capers quickly going over to the Laker bench to say something as we have a timeout. Again, when he has numbers, the defense isn't set. This is an amazing athlete. What a finish. Provided by Goodyear. Driving us forward with every move. Goodyear, more driven. Well, good news for the Miami Heat. Goran Dragic activated for tonight's game. See, Dragic, this is before he's been going through nonstop treatment, working out, trying to get back on the court after injuring that left foot in game one. It was a torn plantar fascia. He missed the next four games. And coming into the playoffs through the first three rounds, he was the Miami Heat's leading scorer in the postseason, just under 21 points per game. Again, he's activated. This is right now, trying to keep himself loose. Whether or not he plays, we don't know. He is desperate to play. And Butler has picked up a lot of the scoring slack with Dragic out of the lineup. He's got Anthony Davis on him. 
Picks it out to Crowder. Crowder misses a three and a foul call against Danny Green, who's a very upset with the call. And it's another three-point attempt with a foul, so three free throws for Jay Crowder. Boy, it did not look like there was much there. Frank Vogel saying the kick out is why Crowder. And, and Crowder falls all the time on jump shots. We saw Duncan Robinson do it last game, searching for the call. And this is a tough one because he does kick out, but Danny Green does keep pursuing forward. He didn't ever come to a stop, so I think it's the right call. You know what? On that second one there, he's in the landing area. Yeah. That one clearly showed it. The whole thing for me is making sure the referees in these type of situations see the action and don't guess. Make sure that you're right whichever way you decide to call a no call. Now, uh, we talked to Eric Spolstra about how they're teaching to defend the three-point shot. He said they used to run drills and just get to the shooter and hand contest. He goes, now you have to do this bizarre side swipe and try not to, to get near the shooter's leg kicks. You know how many drills I did with this guy? Closing out, chopping your feet. Do it again. Do it again. And you know how many times it got done in the game? <laughs> Come on. But don't players have to change the way they've always closed out on three-pointers in, in, in some instances? I think it depends on who you're closing to, Mike. When you're closing to, as they double Butler in the post. Hero gets away, poked away from Caldwell Polk, 1.4 on the shot clock. But you do have to be ultimately so self-conscious of not fouling the shooter. Rondo comes in, and Danny Green will take a seat. And to me, Coach, the way that the Lakers are defending the pick-and-roll action with Bam involved, whoever's handling the basketball, they have to make up their mind to be aggressive. The way they're defending, go to the cup, look to score, trust that Bam will get it off the offensive board. Absolutely. Two turnovers trying to thread the needle. Pass inside. Layup is good with 1.4. Caruso got caught. A uh, nice out-of-bounds play. But it's also James jumped to the corner to try to protect the pass to the corner. And the pass was then allowed right at the basket area. I don't know if that was what they want to do to take away the corner or if that was a mistake by James. Either way, great execution for Miami. Caldwell Pope misses it. Good boxing out. Davis couldn't quite get his hands on the ball. All tied at 13. We play just over seven minutes. And look how Caldwell Pope's just face guarding Duncan Robinson. Hero kicks it out. Crowder is open. Caldwell Pope comes at him. And Crowder... Unable to connect. Both teams have struggled shooting here in the opening minutes. Crowder on LeBron James. Nice feed inside to Rondo. Beautiful pass from James. That's his second assist. A great read. Doesn't have the shooting on the floor as Miami shrinks defensively, but a tremendous cut and fine to Rondo. Bad pass from Hero. Caldwell Pope the steal, drives down the other end and lays it up and in. And that's Hero's second turnover. Each team already with four turnovers. Butler fakes a pass, drives in on James. Couple of fakes back up top to Hero. Hero shot blocked from behind by Davis and an offensive foul as Hero charges into James after having a shot block. Clearly contact, good job by LeBron coming over in the previous play to turn over carelessness, which you can't do against this Laker team. Good defense by the Lakers, good job of turning good defense into transition offense. And that's what you said, though. Again, though, that was showing a drive not to score, but to pass. Rondo finds Davis. Davis doubled. Kuzma just on the court. Can't hit the three-pointer. Lakers just one of six from downtown to start. As James gets his early rest. Kendrick Nunn just into the game. He nails a three-pointer. He was huge for them in the last ball game. Gave them a burst of energy on the offensive end, and for the first time since being back, was playing with extreme confidence. He had 14 points in game five, Mark. This is what he did all season long for this team. Give him credit.
got it back, and when his team needed a punch, he has delivered. Well, if the Miami Heat can extend the series, the NBA Finals would continue Tuesday on ABC. NBA Countdown would begin our coverage at 8.30. Tip-off for a possible Game 7 shortly after 9 Eastern. Right now, let's listen to Laker coach Frank Vogel. Let's go get it, brother. Let's go. Come on. Let's get it. This crowd's going nuts, isn't it, in here in Miami? It's crazy. The beer! Good beer, baby! That's it. We got to get that. got to get that. Contain! 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 There it is! Listen, our defense looks outstanding. Okay, that's that's a start I'm looking for defensively. That's who we are. The 46-year-old Vogel, his first year as head coach of the Lakers. It's called while Pope lines up the three-pointer. That won't go. Davis fighting for it. Gets the offensive rebound back up and throws it down with authority. But that's the way he has to dominate, especially this smaller Miami Heat team. You talk about he'll be a Hall of Famer. But you talk about the great players in the history of this game, the great power forwards. They're not allowing themselves to be defended by Andre Godala with all due respect in this small heat lineup. Kuzma knocks it out of bounds. He was dominant in games one and two, but not as much the last three games here of these finals. You name them. Tim Duncan, Charles Barkley, Carl Malone, Kevin McHale, Kevin Garnett. They would dominate this small lineup, and that's got to be the mentality of Anthony Davis. His combination of size and skill he is just a terror for opponents duncan robinson a little out of control gets it back to igadala jimmy butler with a rare three-pointer and the rebound goes to rondo butler's only taken 11 threes in these finals rondo drives and finishes rondo off the bench with a couple of buckets and then forced a turnover Rondo struggled in game five, but a quick impact here in game six. Well, he struggled throughout the series to score. What has he done tonight? Two layups. A cutting layup, a driving layup, and then, as Mark mentioned, forced the turnover, and Miami already six turnovers. And that's awful defense by Jimmy Butler, too, not staying in front of Rondo. Now you saw Dragic sitting there, and it looks like he's about to check in. Rondo inside, lost it, gets it back. James fakes, James drives, throws it up to Davis, and Davis banks it home. A seven-point first quarter lead for the Lakers. Jimmy Butler looking. Marquise Morris has come on for the Lakers. Duncan Robinson back to none. Nice penetration from none. Butler the corner jumper. Three-pointer for Jimmy Butler. And it's only his fourth three that he's made in the finals. And it looks like Dragic is about to check in. Davis spins against Iguodala. The baseline jumper. High floater is good. Anthony Davis, eight points here on the first. He's four of six from the field. And a whistle away from the ball. Goran Dragic is going to make his entrance after missing the last four games. That left foot, you know, tearing his plantar fascia. It's just great to see him out on the floor. He was playing some of the best basketball of his career. Was sensational for the first three rounds, and it was just destroying him that he couldn't be out there with his teammates. Well, it's just great to see as a fan of the game. Win, lose, or draw, he deserves to be on the floor. I don't think you deserve to be on the floor you earn your right to be on the floor and Eric Spolster obviously thinks he's going to help him and he throws up another or a beautiful lob pass that he was doing through the first three rounds to Bam Adebayo and a foul on the pass James arguing Mike what's wrong with this guy though man he doesn't like a happy ending like a love you know you don't want to see the way that he competed all year long there's not a side of you that no matter who wins, wants to see him yeah, there's a face side. the NBA Finals. That's the one side of the brain. The other side of the brain is, as a coach, you've got to do right by your whole team. It's not about the end. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about as a coach. I'm saying as a fan of the game, which I said, we take a look at the injury, Mike. That's what happened in game one. 
the left foot right away. He only played 15 minutes. And you could just see he was so upset that he has worked so hard to get back on the floor. Back to you, Mr. Head Coach. You don't enjoy the fact that he's I back do. healthy and whole? Well, first of all, I don't think he's healthy and whole, but I think it's a harder decision than what you say as James attacks the rim without any help and one. Uh, now a chance for three-point play. By the way, it's Anthony Davis that down the other end of the floor. That foul on him was his second personal here in the first. This is when LeBron James is a nightmare to defend. And he makes up his mind that he's going to put the ball down and attack the paint area. And he clipped uh, it, uh, Crowder on that drive. The foul was on Crowder, his first. Eric's poster upset. Looks like they're going to challenge it. That's what it looks like, a challenge whether or not LeBron James threw an elbow. Shine brightest when they doubt us. Let's yep. go get it. Butler goes right to the rim. Butler vicious. I'm back to the the wall. It's not like it's never been done before. One thing about this Heat team, they're not afraid. He's a bucket. We're not going to lay down. We're here to win. Back here at game six, 58 seconds remaining. And they are looking in that last drive from LeBron James. Lakers right now leading by seven. You see the elbow come back right into the face of Crowder. It's not a challenge, it's an official review. Is that just kind of normal moving your trying to get your arms free or no, they determine that he threw the right elbow? Well, I don't know if it'll be hostile, but that's an offensive foul. So uh, they're looking to see if it's your favorite play, the hostile act, Jeff. Don't don't bait me, and then <laughs> and then if I say something, I get in trouble. Come on. There's Jimmy Capers, the crew chief. No, didn't have his mic. No, didn't have his microphone on. Now he's going over to explain it to Eric Spolstra. No hostile act is, is the call, so James will shoot the one free throw. Trying to show exactly what he did on <laughs> that play. So Crowder does pick up the personal foul, and James with a chance for a three-point play, already doing a little bit of everything. So could they have gone back and reviewed that, though? After that, that it's not a hostile act, review it for an offensive foul, because to me, he clearly clips him in the jaw. I, I don't know how that's not something. I agree. Out of bio, the Dragic. Well, it's just good to say his name, seeing him out there. Steps back, puts up a three. And that went off. Obviously going to be completely out of rhythm. As the ball goes out of bounds, Lakers get it back with 39.8 remaining. And Bam Adebayo, to me, has to set screens sometimes. He's slipping out trying to get behind his defender for the lob. But when you're being guarded by James, you've got to get some separation for your, your offensive player. Kuzma fakes, now drives, shut off on the baseline. Pass inside to Morris. Caruso kicks it out to James. James down the lane. Back out to Morris. Up top, Caruso, a straight on three. Way short, and rebound to Adebayo. Shot clock is turned off. Lakers do not have a foul to give. Just not a smart foul right there by yep. Kuzma. So that'll put Crowder at the free throw line. And they have done a terrific job in this first quarter the Lakers have. They have been dominant defensively. Absolutely dominant. A crowd of three points in the early going. Acquired back in February with Andre Iguodala. Election season is here, and the NBA family encourage you to make your voting plan today. Don't wait. Visit vote.nba.com for everything you need to make your voice heard. Uh, Dragic gets some minutes, gets a little sweat going, and gets congratulations from his teammates. So desperate to get back on the floor. Bring Solomon Hill in last possession defensively to try to slow down 
the catch and pace of LeBron James with five points four to go in this quarter. Hill has only played three of the five games, played about 23 minutes total. Final seconds, no foul to give for Miami. Caruso drives, just gets it off in time. And it would not have counted as the first quarter comes to an end. LeBron James and Anthony Davis with a hot start. James nine points, five rebounds, three assists, aggressive going to the basket. Davis had eight points, but picked up two fouls. First quarter is done. Lakers by eight. A finals presented by YouTube TV. I'm here with Lakers coach Frank Vogel. Frank, really stifling defensive effort by your guys in that first quarter. Jimmy Butler, only three shots. What are they doing that's working so well? Yeah, we're, we're, we have great activity. You know, we're executing our, our pick and roll defense really well and our switches really well. Just got to do a better job getting to three-point shooters. They got five threes in the first quarter. Emotional moment for the Heat when Goran Dragic checks back in the game. How does that change things for you in terms of what you're trying to do out there, especially defensively? Well, we have coverages in place on how we want to, you know, uh, compete against Goran. He's a great offensive player. He's a leading scorer coming into this. Uh, we got to execute those coverages. Thank you so much, Frank. Yep. Back to you, Mike. All right, Rachel, thank you. Adebayo scores and Rondo scores. And Butler draws the foul. By the way, Rondo is only averaging six and a half points per game in these finals. Already has six points off the bench. Yeah, and they're all layups. Now, this is just not good enough defense. I mean, Jimmy Butler is a better defender than that. You don't have any real shot blocking in the game because Adebayo is out guarding Morris on the three-point line. It makes it imperative, as Butler misses the free throw, to stay in front of the ball. How about Miami has missed four free throws already in this series. They're shooting 88% from the free throw line In game five they were 21 of 22 including eight for eight in the fourth quarter It's been huge for them, but struggling here to start as Butler goes one for two Rondo James Markeith Morris Kuzma as Rajon Rondo off the bench now, nine points in six minutes, and the lead is 10. He's been outstanding, but give him credit. Started off attacking the paint, gets three layups. Now, all of a sudden, that three-pointer is not as challenging as it usually is. Now defending Kendrick Nunn. Nunn and Dragic out there at the same time. Butler goes up top. Andre Godala, three-pointer. Oh, high rebound out of bio, and he's tripped up. And a foul call against the Lakers. An offensive punch by Rondo and poor defense by the Heat. Who's there defending Rondo? Where's the communication? Nobody there. Steps in rhythm. Wide open shot. He works on that every single day. That last foul was on Rondo. His first. Butler hands off. Vigadala's going to try another three-pointer. That's too strong. Taken away, Butler, who was in Rondo's hands. Danny Green guarding Kendrick Nunn. He gets inside. Difficult shot won't go. The tip is up. That misses as well. And James tips the rebound to himself. Pass inside to Morris. Foul on the entry pass as Dragic got caught on a mismatch. Each game, one lucky fan can win beer for a year. If either team reaches 95 points, tweet hashtag ultra beer bonus and hashtag sweepstakes at Michelob Ultra for a chance to win. Miami fans hoping for that game seven. Right now, their team down by 10 as Tyler Hero returns. Interestingly, Frank Vogel brings back Caruso for Rondo. Probably for what I would suspect is a short, quick, brief rest. Had a bio guarding LeBron James. James goes to the rim once again, lays it up and in, and he's in double figures. And a timeout called by Eric Spolstra as the Lakers go up a dozen. Think about a coach, the paint points of the Lakers and the awful defense by the Heat. Right, and there's, they were helping with everybody now that's a half-hearted help that's sticking an arm in there you got to stick your body in front of lebron james if you want to win
Jimmy Butler with a slow start at both ends here in the post. They come and double. And it makes it for a very rough possession. And then defensively, just getting blown by. He's a better defender than that. He can't lose concentration when he's not on LeBron James. The Heat overall shooting just 35% from the field. And again, they've missed four free throws. Have six turnovers inside, won't go. James bumps into Butler. James just bullying down the lane, blocked from behind. But lots of contact as James will go to the free throw line once again. He's tough to defend in these situations. He's got his mind made up, forces all sorts of contact. But he is absolutely aggressive, trying to win himself another ring. And that's why when he drives it like that in transition, you've got to load. He's got to see the second whole body. It can't be a body and a half. That foul was on Butler, his first, as James misses a free throw. So if you're out of bio here, you got to get all the way back and in front and make him kick the ball. James was sensational in game five. 40 points, 13 assists, misses both free throws. He played 42 minutes. Already with 11.6 boards here tonight. 12 point lead for the Lakers. Two and a half gone by in the second. Dragic chased by Danny Green, goes down the lane, high off the glass, rattles around and drops in. Dragic with his first points in his return. That's a tough play to defend, coach. Full speed ahead, going to his left hand. Put so much pressure on your defense. James and Butler matched up again. Caruso sets the screen. Danny Green fakes. James is down. Shot won't go. James holding his left hip. Slow to get up. Dragic bang. That left hip of LeBron's. He was trying to get past him. And Morris. Went in to stop the play. Morris picks up his second foul. He just wanted to, they were five on four, wanted to commit that foul, get the whistle blown. Dragic and Adebayo work so well together. Dragic gets inside, leans a couple of times, tries to go underneath, won't go. Adebayo tried to get it. But Danny Green did a nice job boxing out, and it's Laker ball. Lakers are shooting 58% from the field. Green kicks it out, Morris, wide open look. Three-pointer from the corner is good, and it's a 13-point lead. Outstanding screen by Caruso, not allowing Hero to contest a shot of Morris in the corner. That's good basketball. Damn, out of bio and a travel. Picked up his pivot foot, and that is turnover number seven for Miami. That's what we're talking about. See the screen by Caruso. Hero's thinking, let me go contest the shot. Caruso does a great job of reading. Get him in that look. Morris didn't score in game five. As James dribbles it off a foot, gets it back, kicks it out. Morris, same spot. Couldn't get it to fall, and Dragic the rebound. Crowder to Butler. Butler drives on Kuzma. Little Euro step, flips it up and rolls it in. Jimmy Butler now with six points. They got to get him going to put maximum pressure on the Laker defense to try to get some other guys some better looks. Caruso, the floater. Shot won't go. The tip is good. Caruso getting his first playoff start. Puts the Lakers up 13. Butler and Kuzma again matched up. Butler backs in, kicks it back up top to Dragic. Still seven on the 24. Butler gets into the paint. Crowder gets a good look. Three-pointer won't go. Rebound taken by Kuzma. Caruso floats it into James, and he's grabbed by Crowder. And it's going to be the third team foul against the Heat and the third on Crowder. Make that second on Crowder. James goes right to the bench. Frank Vogel inserting 
Caruso into the starting lineup, and he has responded defensively, timely plays, and the extra effort getting that put back. He has become an invaluable piece of this Laker team. Anthony Davis back in for James, as mentioned. Caruso drives, nice sidestep, finds Davis in the corner, falling away. Won't go, Danny Green back up top to Rondo. And a new 14 on the shot clock. Rondo cross court to Green, good look for three, that one off. Anthony Davis trying to get the offensive rebound, but Crowder comes away. It's great effort on the offensive board by Davis. Bam out of Io drives. Butler's tip out to Tyler Hero. Hero, tough shot in the corner, hits the side of the backboard. Rondo pushing the other way. Rondo drives, another scoop layup, lays it up and in. 11 points for Rondo off the bench. And the Heat call timeout as the Lakers go up 15. The vet. Rondo, excuse me, playoff Rondo that is, about to be championship Rondo again, flat out getting it done for Lakerland. But really deserve a dozen roses, who got her hair done and didn't think I even noticed, she just happy she chose him, but she the one who chose me, that's what's more important, I give her more game than pride. Need to focus on the game? Just tell Siri, turn on Do Not Disturb. 15-point lead for the Lakers here in game six. As you see, Rajon Rondo was at a good game one, helped the turnaround after the slow start. Terrific game two, but he's been up and down since then, but a sensational start here in game six. He's hit all five of his shots, including a three. Has 11 points in eight minutes. The Laker bench played poorly in game five, but they have contributed to this lead right now here in the first half. Butler tied up to Adebayo. Picks it out to Tyler Hero, shot clock winding down, gets inside, blocked. And a 24-second violation. During that last timeout, you guys were talking about how good the Laker defense has been so far. Absolutely swarming. Their ball pressure has totally gotten Miami out of whatever comfort they normally have. If you're Miami, the good news is there's a lot left in this ball game. The bad news is you don't have one guy that has played well on either side of the floor to start this ball game. Duncan Robinson's back in. Rondo. Shot clock down to five. Rondo gets across the lane, spins inside, left-handed layup. Oh, Rajon Rondo putting on a show here in the first half. 13 points on six of six from the field. Crowder. And rattles that one in. And boy, did the Miami Heat need that three-pointer. Davis floats it up and in. He's got double figures now. Crowder on the drive. Crowder on the finish. Back-to-back -back buckets from Drake Crowder. Nice fake, Caldwell Pope kicks it out to Morris. And an offensive foul, Jake Crowder at the other end draws the charge. Well, this is a really good right to left spin as the shot clock winds down over the very agile Bam out of bio. That's just a beautiful finish. Caldwell Pope's offensive foul, his second personal. We're coming up on four and a half remaining here in the second. And the foul is going to go against Danny Green. And Mike, I didn't like that offensive foul call. I, I, I see a couple times tonight where guys are jumping in after a guy has left his feet. I, I just think right now uh, we're gifting too many offensive fouls that should be either play-ons or blocks. To me, he's going, he's avoiding that. He's jumping by him. I agree, Jeff. Butler drives, double team. Last touch by the Lakers, 11 to shoot for Miami. Danny Green picked up the second, explaining to his teammates how, how he didn't commit that last foul.
Kendrick Nunn. Gets down the lane, blocked by Davis, saved by Caruso. What a defensive sequence by Anthony Davis. Caldwell Polk draws the foul, banks at home, and one. Contavious Caldwell Polk with a chance for a three-point play. If you rave about the defensive play by Anthony Davis, how many times have we seen this in the last couple of months? His ability to change or alter shots, setting the tone for these Lakers on the defensive end, creating offensive opportunities. That's stellar. Adebayo picks up his first. Caldwell Pope connects. He's got seven points. He had 16 points in game five, 15 in game four. He's had some really good stretches in these finals. None gets away from Caruso. Passed out of bio, out of his hands. Davis picks it up, and Davis is fouled. That, they're in the penalty with 4-1 remaining and a 17-point lead. And I said it earlier, the Miami Heat perimeter guys are turning the corner, think pass, instead of thinking score. Let your bigs and Bam do the job on the offensive boards. But the Lakers have imposed their will against this Heat team offensively. They have forced the issue defensively. And I, I think... Eric Spolstra has a dilemma right now. Davis is owning the lane. The only way to get Davis out of the lane is to put in a shooting five. Kelly Olynyk had success in game two and three. Do you insert him to try to reignite your offense and try to draw Davis out of the paint? That foul was out of bio, and that's his second. He has not been the same since injuring that neck in game one. Missed two games, has played in games four, five, and six. Anthony Davis, meanwhile, he's now 27 for 27 from the free throw line in the finals, and he's hit 38 consecutive free throws in these playoffs. Sensational free throw shooting. You see how he plugged Davis again, plugged up the lane on Jimmy Butler's drive. He can guard half the driver and still, because of his athleticism, take away lob passes. Good ball denial from Caldwell Pope. Out of bio, a couple of dribbles. Nice feed inside to Butler. Butler changes, layup, count it, and the foul. Butler found an angle, drew some contact, and a chance for a three-point play. But right now, everything offensively for the Miami Heat, it's its a grind. The Lakers are into them. Clearly the contact underneath, and Butler gets the basket going to the line for the possible three-point play. And it's because of how hard the guards are chasing these shooters, and Davis is backing off out of bio to make it really a challenge as Butler misses another free throw. Wow, the Heat have missed five free throws. That has been one of their real strengths all playoffs, especially here in the finals. Davis comes up short. Rebound to Kendrick Nunn. Nunn pushing the pace. Crowder fakes the three. Back up Crowder, hand in his face. Comes up short, rebound. Goes to Rajon Rondo. Oh, that is beautiful defense by the Lakers. Multiple effort. Pulls out with a contest. Pass inside. An errant pass off of LeBron James. And a turnover for the Lakers. That's their sixth. The upcoming final schedule. Will there be a game seven? And if the Heat win this one, it'll be Tuesday night. Tip-off will be shortly after nine on ABC. Under three to play second quarter. And Caruso bumps into Adebayo. Both teams in the penalty. Russo's first. So free throws for Bam Adebayo. Mike, did you see that Russell Westbrook left an $8,000 tip for the staff at the hotel that the Rockets stayed in? And, you know, again, that was sources, so I, I think it's probably some grain of truth to it. I think the winning team should give a playoff share to the staff of that hotel as a gesture for the kindness, the service, 
that they've received while here in the bubble for three months. That's a that's a wonderful idea. I'm I, I'm sure certainly hoping that whether it's a playoff share, but that they'll be treated properly. Another missed free throw by the Heat. Well, I like the gesture. I like the thought. But there you go again, counting somebody else's money. <laughs> Listen, I can count Mr. Arison's money or Miss Miss Bus's money. <laughs> they got enough money. I can count. They've done an incredible job, though. You're right. The staff has been off the charts. Crowder, meanwhile, gets a little over aggressive, picks up his third, and Anthony Davis is going to go back to the free throw line. AD doing a great job moving without the ball, getting position and fighting for position. I want to go back to what you said about Westbrook, coach, because there's people that won't give him any credit and say, well, he's got so much money that 8,000 doesn't matter. 8,000 is 8,000. What an incredible gesture by Russell Westbrook saying thank you in a big way to people that truly appreciate it. And left his room clean. <laughs> How's your room, by the way? Not clean. <laughs> No matter how far back you go, we've never seen anything quite like this. Masterpiece from Jimmy oh, what a play. This is history in the making. The NBA Finals. It's a whole new game. Now, right now, game six has belonged to the Lakers. The first miss of the finals for Anthony Davis. The save, but he was out of bounds when he got it. Out of bio, so it's going to be Laker ball. We'll get a new 14 on the shot clock. But again, you, you're trying to win a championship, and you allow Caruso being boxed out by Jimmy Butler and Bam out of bio, and he outworks them. And then Davis throws it down with the foul. Rondo with the perfect bounce pass. The lead is 20, and a chance for a three point play. That's just a really nice play by Rondo and Davis playing with so much more force on his duck ins on his cuts and on the offensive glass. This game has completely gotten away from Miami. Davis meanwhile after hitting his first 27 free throws of the finals misses a pair. Butler little sidestep difficult shot won't go James tips it Rondo throws it ahead to Caldwell Pope Caldwell Pope goes up layup won't go tip misses Caldwell Pope again. And Contavious Caldwell Pope knocks it down. The lead is 22. The Lakers right now out hustling the Heat. And they've got to get Davis somehow out of the lane. L.A. looking to push every opportunity. Beautiful pass. Caruso banks it in. A precise bounce pass from LeBron James. And the Lakers have blown it open here in the second quarter. James with 11 points, nine rebounds, five assists. Timeout call by the Heat. The Lakers pouring it on an avalanche here in the second. Taking the fight away from the Heat. How about this pass by LeBron James? Threading the needle on point to Caruso, who catches it and does his job by finishing. On the Oculus halftime with Maria, Jalen, Jay, and Paul. Paul, will there be a Hollywood ending right now? And this one is a bludgeoning 58 34, 24 point lead. Still just the second quarter, but the Lakers just dominant, especially on the defensive end. But look how Davis is playing back off. He just, it's just hard on every penetration to get what they need to. All well, Pope to James. And James and Davis have been excellent, but the supporting cast really a huge impact between Rondo and Caruso and Caldwell Pope. Rondo drives, gets inside, back out, Caldwell Pope for three, puts it in. 61 to 34 with a minute to play here in the second. They're shooting 57% from the field. Hendrick Nunn drives, back out, stolen by James. James and Butler. James drives, stolen by Butler, but couldn't hold on. And it'll be Laker ball. Again, watch how Anthony Davis is playing. So far back in the lane. Taking away any back cuts. Can guard both the penetration and the lob. And then he defensive rebounds. He's basically playing center field. 
and daring Bam to shoot as KCP knocks down another one. This is a clinic on both sides of the floor by the Lakers. A 30-point lead here in the second quarter. Kendrick Nunn drives, blocked by Davis. Throws it ahead, Rondo. Caldwell Pope tries it again. And a rebound falls to the floor, picked up by Kendrick Nunn. What a dominant second period for L.A. 25 seconds remaining here in the half. Nunn drives back door, lays it up and in. And a rare mistake defensively by the Lakers here in the first two quarters. And at halftime, Miami's got to try to find some fight. Does it look daunting? Absolutely. Would it take a miracle? Most definitely. But you got to give yourself a chance. Rondo up top to Davis. Davis puts up the three. And that will end the first half. Lakers trying to throw the knockout punch here in the first two quarters. A 28-point lead, the second largest halftime lead in NBA Finals history. The Lakers shoot 54%. Jimmy Butler in the heat in a deep hole as they try and keep this Finals going to a game seven. How about Rajon Rondo? Six for six from the field. He had 13 points off the bench. And set up his teammates. Caldwell Pope with 15 first half points. Lakers, the huge lead here in game six.